shows us how to score every time in Madden 2001. And we put the spotlight on massively multiplayer worlds. And we return to a galaxy far, far away in our review of Battle for Naboo. Stick around, it's game time. Hello and welcome to our show from Metreon in San Francisco. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Kate Patello. Now, online gaming is here to stay, and the multiplayer component has become an essential piece of almost every PC game release, for good or ill. Now we're seeing it more and more on consoles. So, between the two of them, it's becoming massive. Feeling lonely in your single-player conquests? Computer AI just not cutting it? I heard you had a hard time. Well, there are persistent worlds out there chock full of other real players only an internet connection away. <coughs> Massively multiplayer online games have exploded over recent years and gameplay worlds have evolved from the 2D realms of Ultima Online to 3D enhanced games like Asheron's Call, EverQuest and the upcoming Ultima Third Dawn. In these games, players create a unique customizable character and explore a persistent universe. When you log out, your character lives on. Ultima Online gives players a number of ways to live. <coughs> this ever-expanding world was introduced in 1997. Players can either gain points by battling in warring parties or develop saleable items by becoming craftspeople. These fantasy world games are not without their real-world problems. Some players try to take advantage of others. The standard classic problem is player killing, but it's not just player killing, it's taking a newbie out uh, to the dragon's den so the newbie gets killed by the dragon, or it's uh, saying you're going to fix something and taking it from him and running away and logging off, or like there's, there's so many different ways that you can screw up someone else's gameplay experience. Origin has hired game masters to deal with problems that arise during game sessions. When we have so much interaction of a game like this, a lot of times there's going to be a lot of conflict with different ideologies and different play styles. So we'll have a lot of racial harassment and other kinds of harassment in game. Apparently it's hard to escape real life. Another real life problem that could be evident in these games is boredom. What often happens in online games is people don't put real storylines in it. In which case, players often wander around the world and go, well, what's my purpose in life other than to you know, fight more monsters and collect more treasure? There's what we call the Bible, which is this script for the first year. It's an outline that says, you know, this major character appears, he tries to take over the world, this other character comes in. And the players, and these are regular events that happen in the game that the players participate in. So yes, trying to include a very clear storyline that the players can participate in. The latest incursion into the Ultima universe, Third Dawn, will rise in the spring. Thousands of players will be able to explore Third Dawn's persistent world simultaneously while enjoying its motion capture animated characters and 3D environments. Another massively multiplayer universe can be found in Asheron's Call. In this world, all playable characters are human and there are plenty of dangers to avoid. Monthly world-changing events occur whether you're playing or not, so every time you log in, you may find unexpected changes. EverQuest is Varent's 3D online role-playing game. Launched in 1999, it continues to be extremely popular. The game is so popular that Varent has released expansion packs for players to explore. So, besides Ultima Third Dawn, what does the future hold for massively multiplayer online gaming? When it's released, Neverwinter Night should be the closest thing to a multiplayer Dungeons & Dragons session online. The game will be the first to carry the third edition D&D rule set. I cast a spell! Where's the Mountain Dew? Like Dungeon Masters, server hosts will be able to set many different attributes and rules for their sessions, including whether or not death is permanent in the game. You can also expect next-gen consoles to provide massively multiplayer games online. The first of these games is Fantasy Star Online for the Dreamcast. The new title will be truly international, thanks to the multi-language interpreter, which allows you to understand different languages in real time. Fantasy worlds are making the real world smaller every day. It's impressive to see how far multiplayer games have come in the past four years. Just think what the next four years will bring. I'm attacking the darkness! <laughs> <laughs> so, if anybody's come up with a catchy way to pronounce MMORPG, just let us know. More pink. More page. More news.
The sequel to Valve Software's benchmark shooter, Half-Life 2, has been confirmed for an Xbox release. A multi-platform release of the game is expected as well. Konami will publish the game based on the movie The Thing in the first quarter of 2002 on all major platforms. Coding will be taken care of by Evolva developer Computer Artworks. According to the company, gameplay will feature a mix of survival, horror, action, and science fiction. Sony has announced that the highly anticipated release of Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec has been delayed again. The Japanese release date has now been changed from February 15th to sometime in April, and European and U.S. release dates will also move accordingly. In a study of third and fourth graders, new research suggests that limiting time spent watching TV and playing video games may prevent violent behavior. Researchers got children to cut their TV and gaming time by one-third and found the monitored children to be less aggressive than the control group. Coming up on GameSpot TV, we return to the Star Wars universe in our review of Battle for Naboo. And we take tea with the Mad Hatter in Alice.